Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to be looking at a simple SSRF, a server site request forgery vulnerability in the OSP juice shop. And we're manually going to exploit that and then afterwards we're going to look at how the developer could have automatically found this vulnerability using a really cool tool. So let's jump into it. So for starters, I'm here on the OSP Juice Shop page and I found an interesting functionality in my account. So if I go to my account, then I can choose an image URL for the profile picture. Um, so currently I have no profile picture showing up. However, if I, for example, take this, uh, this cute cat and I copy its URL, I can paste it in at the bottom here, link image, and now if I refresh, I see that this cat is now my user profile. And if I inspect this element, and let's do that, let's make this a bit bigger, we will see that this image is now part of the website. So it was downloaded from this URL. That probably means that this backend is making um, requests to a URL that we supply, which is already very interesting. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna open this in a new tab. So here we see our cat at the correct URL. So that's really cool. Now, can we actually make requests to anything? Maybe, but in order to test that, I'm gonna create a post bin, which is pretty much just a place that's gonna show me where all the requests, uh, all the requests that's come into it. So I'm just gonna copy this URL here to my post bin. I'm gonna go back into the juice shop and I'm gonna link that as an image. Now we see that my profile picture has disappeared and if I refresh my post bin, we see that, okay, we get a request coming in here. Um, so that's cool, that's nice. What do we do next from here? Because obviously now we know that SSRF is a thing here. We are able to forge requests, which is cool. But, but can we do anything else with this? Yes, we can exploit this vulnerability. Um, and one of the interesting things about an SSRF is that we obviously make have the server make a request. And the server, most in most cases, has some different permissions on the internet than we. We are coming from outside of the internal network of the server, so we mostly cannot go into other open ports that are only open internally or other machines that are open on the internal network. However, the server has access to that. So let's see if there's any other ports open on the server that we usually wouldn't be able to get access, but through this SSRF we can access. And for that I'm going to catch this request in burp. So I'm going to start my burp listener, then I'm going to say, okay, I want to request from localhost, uh, for example, port 80. Okay, I'm going to link that image, and now in burp that's going to get captured. I can send that to the repeater, and in the repeater, we see a couple things going on here. Uh, if I send this request, we see that we get a 302 found. So that's all cool. But uh, I obviously want to brute force this port number to not only scan for port 80, but for all of them. So I'm going to send this to the intruder. And in positions, I'm going to clear all of these positions. And I'm going to add a marker here for this 80 because I want to substitute this with uh, specific payloads and then here we could do a list of numbers so let's do a number from uh, let's say yeah that's uh, you could obviously make a um, a list here that you want but let's quickly just add some values yourself because um, I'm currently not using the pro version so it will take a while so let's add a couple ports so we can add uh, a thousand we can add 80 80 we can add 8,000 and so uh, so on. And obviously, usually you could just scan all 65,000 of them. And then I'm also going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on. Uh, and these are what we're going to scan through. And I'm going to start the attack. And you'll see that, that it will start running through these. And all of them will return the same status and the same length. However, Let's take a look at what happened with our image. What is our image right now? 
If I reload this, we see that it's not a cat anymore. Something changed here, something happened. But what happens? Because the image is apparently not a valid image because the browser cannot display it. But what is it then? So I'm gonna copy this URL and let's just curl it. And we see that we have some HTML here, interesting. So I'm just gonna redirect that uh, into, let's say slash temp, slash a dot html and then i can do firefox slash temp slash a dot html to open it in firefox oh and we see we get um an index page here of something and that something has a flag.txt file now we have no id uh, can i not go to my burp Let's find my burp again. We have no idea which of these payloads actually worked and actually did that, but presumably one of these is actually an internal server that has a slash flag.txt file. Now let's close this attack and let's start a new one with all of these ports. But, and my burp is doing weird things, but this time here, I'm gonna add flag.txt to it. So now, this will go and scan all of those ports for the file flag.txt. Let's start this attack again. And okay, that's done. Now let's try to curl this again. And we see that now the image contains flag cool stuff. And so this is how we exploited a simple SSRF to actually um, read files internally on the server uh, that we shouldn't be able to access normally, but because we are executing this from the server, the server has access to it, and that way we can read files. And that's kind of how you get impact with an SSRF. However, now let's take a look at how this developer could have prevented this from happening and how he could have automatically found this vulnerability using a really cool tool called ShiftLeft, the ShiftLeft code analyzer. So let's say I am a developer and I have no awareness of security. I don't know how to pen test. I can't do all of that myself. I don't want to hire someone, but I still want obviously to have some security, some sense of security in my application. What can I do? In this case, I have my source code here and I want all of this scanned for vulnerabilities. And for me, the easiest would be that whenever I make a pull request into the master or the main branch, that then that automatically gets scanned and I automatically get a report of all the vulnerabilities. That would be the nicest. And that is something that ShiftLeft, their code analyzer, can offer. So I'm gonna go over to shiftleft.io slash login and I'm quickly gonna log in with GitHub here. And that will then bring you to their uh, main page, their dashboard, where you see all the apps that you've been scanning and so on. So that is all cool. Um, now let's set up a action here, a GitHub action that runs every single time um, that we make a pull request. So I've already created one, so we'll quickly go over that. I have the shiftleft.yaml file here. And uh, this file is really cool. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna run on every pull request. So every time a pull request gets made, it's gonna run. And what is it gonna do? It's gonna do a static analysis here. So all of this uh, all of these steps are pretty much, you can get them from the documentation and the link to the documentation will be on the screen right now. They have great documentation uh, for uh, GitHub, but also other, um, other versioning software and, and stuff. So check that out. But to quickly run over it, we're gonna download the shift left command line interface. We're gonna set all of that up and then we're gonna start running it. We're gonna analyze it and so on. Uh, and this all also uses your shift left access token um, which I have put in the GitHub secrets, which is something that's really nice to know. So I'm gonna to go to settings and then I can go to secrets. And down here I have my secret, you can update it. And if you want this shift left access token, you can just go to your profile on shiftleft.io to your account settings and then copy the access token from here. But with that all set up, it's like as simple as that. It takes five minutes to set up. And from there you have this and you can just run it by running it manually or by making a pull request and it will automatically run. And then we can see the results of this. So if I go into my run, if I go into my next gen static analysis, you can see that it started running, it started processing all of the files because it's a big application, all of them. And all the way at the bottom here, it will say have a link here that you can follow 
and it will bring you back to the shift left IO dashboard and here you can have a list of everything that it found. And in this case it found 109 vulnerabilities of which 26 critical so that is quite bad for me uh, as a developer but let's check these out and let's, let's see if we actually find our SSRF that we found manually. So in the vulnerability categories, we see that the main category is XSS here. Um, but let's go into vulnerabilities here. And in vulnerabilities, we can have a look at uh, what we can find here. So this is a JavaScript only, so we can filter on all of these things. Um, but I want to filter on the category here. And here we see that there's a ton of categories, a crypto category, XSRF, uh, weak random, uh, path traversal, but we also have SSRF here. So let's take a look at what shift left found for an SSRF. So a server side request forgery and then attacker controlled data uh, as the URL via request in anonymous. Let's click on this and here we see a data flow. So let's see where this starts off. So this starts off in line 13 here with our request. And what is this file? This is the profile image URL upload file. So that already sounds good. Okay, so it starts off here with the request. The request then becomes request.body.imageURL, then URL, and then eventually it gets used here with this .get URL, which is basically user input. Which is obviously not good, shouldn't be a thing, but was a mistake made by the developer, in this case on purpose, but uh, in real applications obviously not on purpose. So now the developer knows, okay, there's an issue there. But like I said earlier, this developer doesn't really understand security. He hasn't had any security training ever, so he has no idea what is wrong with this. How could this be exploited? Well, for that developer, there is a description here. This description has uh, a lot of uh, information, also links to the CWE and OASP. But additionally, there is a security training, and this is where things get really cool um, because this is a great training that quickly covers SSRFs, so you can go through all of this. Uh, it's, it's really nice, it explains things in a really simple and easy way, like made for people that obviously aren't security people because they will already understand it, but made for developers to understand what the impact could be of these things. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through all of this here, but that just gives you a quick idea of what is going on there. Now, back to the shift left dashboard, it has uh, a lot more functionality. You can mark it as fixed. If you fix it, you can assign it to people. So if you have multiple people in a company working together, uh, you can assign it to people to fix. And that's all super, super cool. And obviously, in this case, the developer has its work cut out for him. He has to fix all of these issues, which will... Uh, take a while, but now he will get notified on every pull request of issues that arise in his application and he can make sure that we can all use the internet in a safer way. And that is what the shift left code analyzer can do for you. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, you can make a free account on shiftleft.io. So I definitely suggest checking that out, um, going through it and seeing if you like it. But that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to see the offensive side of an SSRF and then also the defensive side uh, of it, kind of how a developer could find it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care, guys.